Hello and welcome to another guide. Today I want to talk with you about how to farm weapon experience and this fast and efficient. The content of this video will be about things you need to know before and places to farm at. We will begin with things you need to know. Let's have a look at the different experience types we have in New World. There is player experience and weapon experience. As soon as you do a kill, the game will reward you with the experience. For the amount of experience you will receive, it does not matter if you are in the level phase or already max level. The next thing I want to make you aware of is the split of the experience. Here you can see me fighting a boar with my rapier and the world gauntlet. In the end the weapon experience will be divided into two, one part for the rapier and the other part for the world gauntlet. This effect only applies if both weapons are not max level. Here you can see me leveling my musket. I will hit them with my musket first and then finish them with a greatsword. Since my greatsword is already max level, it will not get any experience and all the experience will get towards the musket. The important thing to point out here is that you don't have to kill the enemies with the weapon you want to level, you just need to hit them once. The last thing you need to know is how you can increase the amount of experience you will receive. First 10% bonus you can just achieve by turning on your PvP. The most efficient one is a booster for weapon experience. You can get those from the real money store or out of the premium part from your season pass. Another way to increase the experience you get is by being in a group. But this is not a buff, it's more about efficiency. Being with others will even reduce the experience you will get. But let me explain to you why it is still worth it. I will show you now multiple kills of the same enemy in different situations. The first kill is only me with no buffs. This kill of the named enemy will reward me with 77 points for my musket. The second kill is in a group with two players and no buffs. This kill will reward me with 53 points for my musket. Now I will buff us with music. This will increase the amount of experience we will get in our group by 15%. And at this point I want to say a special thanks to Uragos who helped me with the demonstration of the group buff. Our last kill is still in the group with a 15% bonus and this kill will reward me with 59 musket points. To fully understand why it is still better to be in a group I have written down all the experience here for you. Since you should not run in a group without the buff I will only compare the solo kill with the group plus buff kill. The big benefit of being in a group is it allows you to pull more enemies and to kill more enemies. And as soon as you killed like 24% more enemies in a group as you could have killed alone, you already benefit from being in a group. The group penalty by the way also applies if you are not in a group but two players attack the same enemy. So maybe invite the stranger right next to you, play some music together and enjoy the group buff. Let's finally talk about the places where you can farm your weapon experience. You have normal areas like the Thorpe Camp or the Ocean View Post and the Channel View Post. You have elite strongholds like Brightwood Isle, Eridanos and Scorpius. Which area you want to farm depends on you and on the fact how many players are running there because of the respawn timers. A link to all areas you can find in the description below. We begin with the Thorpe Camp. The camp is located in the north of Great Cleef and is actually called Battlecast Crossing. Players call it the Thorpe Camp because of this guy. We will meet Commander Thorpe here again. This is the solo event you will be sent to do instead of the Depths Expedition. This means if you see a small one running around, just throw them an invite and quickly help them. You have to defeat multiple waves of enemies and the last wave will be Commander Thorpe itself. And you can do this as often as you want until you reach your weapon experience you want to have. The downside of this location is you don't have much enemies you can pull together for efficiency and you have to wait in between the waves and you have to wait until the event starts again. The next location is one of my two favorites, the two posts, Ocean View and Channel View posts. They are located in the north of Restless Shore. How this works is you have two posts. The Channel View post in the west side, you gather all enemies there, kill them, and then you move over to the Ocean View post in the east, gather all enemies and kill them, and then you repeat. What I like about this spot is you have a lot of enemies you can pull together for a nice efficiency and as soon as you cleared one camp the other one has respawned. 
Another positive thing about this location is you only have normal enemies with a low level so you can farm this easily solo. Here you see us moving from the cleared ocean view post over the beach to the channel view post. If you want to be super safe you can place a camp in between those two. Being in the group makes this spot even more efficient since you can split up together all the enemies and meet in the end to kill everything. Since this is a known place for weapon experience farm, you will always meet some people here you can group up with. The next farming location is our first elite stronghold, the Brightwood Isle. It's located in the south of Brightwood. All you do here is circling around on the island, gathering your enemies and killing them. This is not such a popular place, so if the other places are overrun, you can come here. I'm actually lucky here, it is about to turn night. This means in this location will spawn additional ghost enemies. In this area you actually have three boss named enemies. One which is always there, this is Archminister Hailflock inside of the house on top of the hill. And during the night behind the big house will also spawn Lady Genevieve with little Simon. Don't try to kill them, they are just a waste of time because it takes a while to kill them and the amount of experience you get is not really worth the work. Unless you are in a group and you can kind of delete them. Next to the obvious weapon experience you can get some elite supply chests here, some iron and also some modes. I will now show you the rest of the round. Unfortunately someone else was here before so not all enemies are up. If you are not interested in the rest of the route, feel free to use the chapter markers below to jump to the next one. The next elite area I want you to show is my old favorite one, Eridanos. It is located in the center of Restless Shore, surrounded by huge mountains. So you actually can't take the depth fast travel point. You need to take the one in the west side, Shrine of Sisyphos. On your way up to the building, you don't have much enemies. And as long as you don't have problems with the respawn timers, it's not worth farming them. Here's only one downside, and this is about the caster enemies. They have a shit ton of life and heal the others, so they're a little bit annoying. Luckily, they are not all over the building, and some you can even skip. For example, the ones in the middle of the building, or the two right next to the boss. The boss you don't want to fight anyway, because it has a shit ton of life. And with the two casters right next to it, it's really annoying and really not worth it. A positive thing about this place is if you have problems with the respawn timers or you just want to grab them anyway, there are a lot of farmable things around. You can find here fibers and a lot of trees, witwood trees, runewood trees and even the new ones, the runewood trees. And also of course some elite supply chests. I will show you now the rest of the route inside of the building and outside of the building. When you're not interested in it, feel free to skip towards my absolute favorite, Scorpius.
The last location I want you to show is beside the two posts, my favorite one, Scorpius. It is located in the northeast of Morningdale. Since this is an elite level 50 area, you need to be a little bit more careful than in the others. I recommend you to have a tank or have it like me, be your own tank. The first thing you want to do is placing a camp for safety reasons on the position I'm about to show you. After you've done so, it's actually time to make our way towards Scorpius. The place we are landing at is the one where the first elite enemies will be. Since it makes your life easier, I recommend to kill those enemies here, but try to avoid the tentacles. Side your way towards the huge building you see over there until you stand in front of two priests, which you will actually skip. Here we reached our final farming location in Scorpius. Remember, we want to skip those two priests ahead of us. For me it was enough to farm respawn wise the outside of Scorpius and I never set food inside. With a good group of strong EPS you can for sure grow inside, be aware there are two named bosses in there as well and some more priests. Try to line up sight your enemies so they follow you, this will allow you to stack your enemies on the priests which will make your kills much easier and efficient. Like in the other strongholds you have some stuff to farm here, mostly fibers and of course elite supply chests. The next pool you need to be careful of, there is a tentacle with a priest and some other small enemies. On the other side of the building there is the same pool with a tentacle and a priest and some smaller enemies and having a tank makes your life here much easier. When you face a tentacle there is only one ability you need to be aware of, that's the slam, but luckily you can easy dodge it. As a conclusion I would say if you can farm the channel view and the ocean view post together those two are the most efficient ones. If you cannot farm there because there may be too much players or you don't want to farm there because you just need to see something else, I recommend one of the elite strongholds. I hope I could help you with this video so you can farm the weapon experience you need very easy and fast. That's it. I say thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And now I will leave you to the rest of my Scorpius run.